All right, guys, welcome back to another interview on Everyone Hinged. I am joined by Chris Lencioni. How's it going? I'm good, man. Just Lenquini in it up, bro. Chris Lenquini. <laughs> Uh, he, he's, he's taking the mic because obviously I'm so bad at pronouncing it. Everyone knows on here. I'm so bad at pronouncing names and I butchered his name up again. You got to tell people that, man. You can't just let that go. That's hilarious. I, uh, I, think I, I, hilarious. Called, I called him Chris Lenquini or something. Please. And thank you. Thank you very much. We, we, we've, we've got it. We've got it knuckled down though, I think. I, I might have yeah, to watch a few, a few more videos on, on how to pronounce it and stuff. But yes, um, let's um, talk about... Um, the return to Bellator. Um, how does it feel to obviously be back on a big show? Uh, it's just kind of one of those things where I spent the last two years just being incredibly frustrated because I knew that I was, you know, top level MMA, right? There's, I like to look at it like baseball, man, baseball, because I really love baseball and I wish that Oregon had a better baseball program where I live. My state just doesn't. Um, and you've got single A, double A, triple A, and then you got the big leagues, right? And there's so many MMA fighters out there that think they're big league material, but they're double A or they're triple A. You need more fights, you know? And I know I'm big league material. And I haven't been able to get a single easy fight in my life. You know, the one guy I fought with a bad record was like 11 and 10. That's still 21 fucking MMA fights, bro. That's a lot. And he's 50-50 pretty much. That's a dangerous man. He's either going to beat your ass or you're going to beat his ass. You don't know what kind of flavor you're going to get there. There's all those flavors in the rainbow, you know? And I smoked him. I smoked him in a minute. He didn't even touch me, you know. So. Yeah, I really, I really wish I could talk to you about the the, the baseball reference. I'm English. I have no clue about baseball. It's cricket. It's cricket. It's the same shit. Cricket. Man. There's probably, high, <laughs> yeah, there's probably low level and high level cricket guys out there, man. So that's just how it goes. Imagine it like a grading system: one A, two A, three A, and then major leagues, pros, real pro, the, the best pros. And I am in the best pro category. So. Yeah, I would say probably our baseball is cricket. Then that was that was a good comparison. I, I, I like love that one. Cricket. Love cricket. You like it's cricket? So much, so much fun, dude. So much fun. <laughs> I, I, I played oh, it oh. when I worked for uh, the YMCA. We we had an English guy. No. Am I lagging out? No, no, lagging no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. Good. Yeah, I love cricket. It's a fun ass game. Yeah, uh, so let, let's talk about the fight instead of cricket. Um, a, a big fight against Cody Law. Um, and obviously, in his last outing, he, he, you know, he suffered his first professional loss. Um, what, what can he take away? If you have watched it, any, what can he take away from his last performance? I didn't even watch it. I just saw he lost because he's like a COVID fighter. He's like a, They gave him all these fights during COVID and shit. Where I know half the guys weren't even training. And so, like, most of his record doesn't mean shit to me. I pay attention to the fact that he comes from, like, I think ATT. And he's a high-level wrestler, and he thinks he's a boxer and shit like that. And that's cool, but I don't think he's really been in MMA too long. So as far as experience goes, I think I'm way more experienced than this guy. So I'm very excited for that. And, uh, I mean, you lost. So he just lost. So he probably will lose again. He'll probably be comfortable with that in his mind. In the back of his mind, he'll be comfortable with that. It's different. It's different when you have a family. You got different shit on the line. You just don't lose. Losing's not an option, man. I'm very willing to go out there and get very, very hurt to win and i just don't see him putting on a hurting like that no one's ever done that to me so if he does that good for good for him fuck you but he's not gonna do it you know yeah you talked about it there how, how you know obviously his wrestling background um uh, division two obviously as i talked about i'm english i'm no good at these grading systems division two wrestler out of university of pittsburgh um and obviously you're an accomplished grappler yourself bjj brown bro uh, and when we talk about these grappling versus grappling, grappling matchups, it usually tends to see, you know, the striking. You usually see, you know, a bit of a striking affair. Mm -hmm. uh, how, where do you see this fight taking place? Well, I already put the bet out there, man. That he's going to shoot on me. $1,000, he's going to shoot on me. So if he doesn't shoot on me, fuck, what if I just knock him out in the first round? Then I owe him an extra 1000 bucks because he definitely didn't <laughs> shoot on me. I didn't even fucking think about that, dude. Fuck. I should have put that in the bet, but I can't go back on it now. I've said it to a bunch of people. He's probably going to shoot on me, man. Let's be real. I'm going to hit him with some shit that he hasn't seen, and that's going to be really frustrating. ATT, lick my nuts. They don't know what I do. You know what I mean? They don't know my style. <laughs> They're so annoying, man. I hate franchises. I don't fucking like franchises. I think the ATT franchise is lame. We've got an ATT in Portland. That's not even an ATT. They're disgusting. You know, I'm not going to sit here and talk too much shit, but um, I like the mom and pops. You know what I mean? I like the mom and pops gyms. Bring those back. So I'm so sick of all these ATTs and these bow nickels. Suck my balls. So ridiculous. 
That's like, I'm okay. fighting the poor man, Bo Nickel. I'm fighting the poor man's Bo Nickel out here, dude. You know what I'm saying? He looks uh, like a poor version of Bo Nickel. I, I, I know you know that. I bet you might be English, but I know you know what poor man's version of something is. That is a poor yeah. man's version of Bo Nickel. I uh, may be English, but uh, yeah, obviously two fantastic wrestlers, um, obviously but out of university. But I, 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 I just spoke to um, Cody Law and I, and I actually said to him, I think this is a step up to um, from, from his last fight. And obviously no disrespect to obviously his last fight. I yeah. said, but I think this is a step up. Obviously you're veteran. It's like mm-hmm. you've, been, you've been inside Bellator. Had, most of your fights have been inside Bellator. I think this is a step up. And I thought maybe Bellator put me in the wrong guy. Hey, man, we're both really good-looking guys. Whichever one of us wins, they can build up, bro. It's fucking survival of the fittest out here, dude. You eat what you kill. So if he beats me, he gets a nice ride up. If I beat him, I, I get the ride up, you know, either way. But I, I want more fights, that's for damn sure. I'm sick of waiting around. I want to bust some fights out, man. I'm trying to beat this guy's ass, enjoy my Christmas, fucking watch all the dumbass Santa Claus movies with Tim Allen with my kid, you know what I mean, while drinking hot chocolate, and then fuck somebody up again in, like, February. I want to get right back to it, you know? I got yeah. properties I'm trying to buy, man. I got a couple properties on my eye. And I'm, I got to fucking fuck some people up to get it. Which I think <laughs> is the coolest shit ever, dude. Because if you think about how we fucking built our cities and towns and shit. And we fought each other for land and took it over and built it up. I'm, I'm basically a modern day fucking pioneer. I'm going to beat somebody up and go buy some property. There's nothing fucking cooler than that out here, dude. So... Obviously, I love how you think, and obviously, and you know, in the future, and obviously, um, I, I'll get to it eventually. But obviously, back to the Cody Law for ultimately, um, I did ask him, "Where does this fight take place?" He said, thousand dollars he shoots." So you're expecting him to shoot for your legs? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna sniff my crotch for sure. All up in there, dude. All up in there. Wow, he's gonna take one hit, and he's gonna go. Ooh, he's gonna, he's gonna be like this. Ready? Ooh, his hands are gonna go out. Like every wrestler does, when they take a big hit, they go, ooh, their fucking hands come at you like they're fucking Frankenstein. It's going to be really funny. Thousand and obviously, you, you, obviously, you're, obviously, you start to take downs, then I, I, I guess then you piece them up on the feet, or you catch yeah. him with an unorthodox co- uh, um, choke, sorry. So now that's the question. If he takes me down, but I catch him in a sub, do I still owe him $1,000? <laughs> Probably, because he did shoot the takedown. No, wait. No, no, no. If he shoots the takedown, he owes me a thousand dollars. That's how it goes. But you know what I mean. So if I knock him out or hit him with something, he ducks his head and I choke him out on the feet. No takedown. I owe him a thousand bucks. So it's a win-win for him, man. Either way, either way, he's gonna get an extra thousand bucks. And obviously, after you lost last fight, you wanted the big fight on the on the big show. You get you got it now. You're back mm-hmm. on Bellator. Your second stint, uh, and, and I presume you're you're looking at the top of the division. You're looking at the champion. You're looking at Usman Nurmagomedov. And then you're probably maybe licking your, lip, licking your lips a little bit. Maybe you want that match up in the future. Usman, I think, is 55, if I'm correct. Uh, I think, uh, Petri- oh, yeah, Petri- it's Petri- Sorry, I get mixed Petri- up between yeah. the... It's all I good. It's all- I know we're, we're just close. We're close, but we're not also at the same time. 55ers are like 200 fucking pounds, dude. <laughs> 45ers are like 160. You know, it's a big fucking difference. That yeah, people like, well, it's just a 10 pound difference. Look at Michael Chandler. He's fucking all ass, dude. He's got like 210 pounds of ass. Yeah, uh, I got mixed up with the Pitbull brothers. They're... You're good. You're good. Yeah, I want the, I like the Pitbull brothers. I think they're great because they're, uh, they're old and they're Brazilian. So they're basic. Um, I'll take whoever, man. I, I got, I got been telling everybody, man, I want the easiest fights over and over again. So Cody Law is a very easy fight. Uh, he's supposedly ranked number nine. That's what the Bellator website said. Then I want number eight or number seven, whoever's easiest, number six, number five, whoever's easy. You know what I mean? That's so on and so forth. Four, three, two, whoever's easiest, and then one or champion, whoever's easiest. You know, if I can get a shot at the belt in the next two years and I'm like, what is my fucking record? And a nine and three, I'd like to be like fucking 14 and three or something sexy, something cool, you know, and then fight for the belt. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so obviously my last question I have for you. Um, you've rebranded yourself as a uh, dad sunshine, and that only you know put, springs out to me that obviously the biggest motivation in your career is is, yeah. is your little baby. Yeah, I have a little baby boy. Hey, could you imagine me as a champion? Wouldn't that be awful? I'm like <laughs> a terrible person. I, I'd just be the worst, man. I'd just I, I troll make everybody. Twenty four seven, they'd be getting trolled. And yeah, I love the nickname Sunshine, and I never 
thought that I, I would meet anyone more sunshiny than me, except my boy. I, we've had a lot of... Oh, no. Calling me. People be calling me and shit all the time while I'm on these interviews and spam calling me. They think it's funny. Um, I've never met anyone that's like like lit up somebody's day more than my kid. Strangers, complete strangers. Like babies are cute, but some of them are just like, uh, they don't do anything. They're like, they just fucking look at you. My kid is so funny, man. He'll just make your day. My favorite thing he does at the gym is everybody's got all their water bottles just lined up, right? Nice line. And he'll go by and he'll be like this. Uh. Like he'll backhand one and he'll like elbow one and he'll come by and he'll flick his foot at another one. And then at one point I looked at him and he was just rolling on the ground, was just rolling and knocking all the fucking water bottles over. And the whole gym is, I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to teach. And he's making everybody laugh in the gym. It's so funny, dude. So yeah, he's a powerful motivator. I want to give him everything. I want to give him everything. So. Yeah, I've actually seen, um, obviously, uh, after one of your um, friends' fights, uh, one of your uh, teammates' friends, you've actually got, um, I don't know what you call it. The, um, the baby carrier. The baby carrier, and you got your son in there. So, was he, so he was in the corner, wasn't his first hand? Yes, yes, 100%. I brought him with to one of my uh, students' fights uh, and cornered them, and it was awesome, and he fucking loved it. And <laughs> it, I, I thought these kids are young. They're like 15, 16 years old doing MMA fights, and I want to set them – set them off right. I want them to have a good, clean head. I want to build the future of this sport in a good, positive way, not a bunch of, like, ex-cons and gangbangers and shit, you know? Like, I would love to clean the sport up a little bit, you know? Um, obviously, you're going to need some grit, and everybody's got grit, so you don't need to be, uh, you know, an ex-con to fucking be a fighter kind of thing, you know what I mean? Or ex-drug dealer, all that shit. So, well, I brought my son with, and I thought, man, this will be fun. Every In between their rounds, they got to look at me. They got to look at the baby, and it's going to bring them back to reality, and they're going to listen to what I have to say. And they smoked those guys. It was awesome. That, that honestly, that's truly inspiring. Uh, I, I, obviously, I love everything that you're speaking about, obviously, about your kid, um, how, how he's the biggest motivator. Um, and I, I wish you best luck on December 9th. Obviously, it's, you know, it's a big fight, a tough fight. Back Fuck with the big show. <laughs> okay. That's brilliant. I love it. Wish you the best of luck, Chris, on December 9th. Go and smash it. Um, obviously, go out there and go have fun and bring home the money. Thanks, man.